So security in the traditional sense of the word is about maintaining access to device and, and information on those devices. Traditionally this is going to be a, a three-way trade-off between the security, the usability and the, and the cost of implementing this. Normally the focus so far has been on keeping bad things out of your network. So this is things like hackers, uh, viruses, worms, etc. What we're able to do with data loss prevention is focus on keeping the good things in. So this would typically be things, you know, your, your customer data, your intellectual property, you know, your corporate plans, mergers, acquisitions that you might be working on, etc. Okay, so the difference between data loss prevention and data protection is data protection is, is typically what you use to protect your data against the effects of things like theft, um, natural disaster, hardware failure, that kind of thing where effectively you, you've, you've lost the data and you need to recover it. Okay, so, so generally the, the connection is, is data protection is, is always about recovery. With data loss prevention, it's more about preventing that data from getting into the hands of other people outside of your organization. So this is basically any kind of information related risks so, so maybe we're talking about your customer database going outside your organization or your, your intellectual property products that you're, you're working on and you're designing maybe that information the last thing you want is for that to get into the hands of your competitors so so what we actually have is a, a process of content monitoring and filtering so we're looking at your areas of risk so this is going to be your your endpoints your network your storage and, and we're looking at the content as, as this information passes through those areas of risk we're looking at having defined what does your content confidential data look like? Are we going to match this against your customer database to say that if we saw a hundred customer records going out through someone's Hotmail account, do we want to do something to, to stop that data or are we just trying to build a profile of, of this before we take any action? There's a number of different ways that the data loss can occur outside of organizations. The majority of data loss that we see is always accidental. This can manifest itself in people who are, you know, they, they lose their laptop, they leave it in a taxi, leave it in the bar or something else. It contains not encrypted data so as soon as someone has access to that laptop that they, they therefore have access to all the data which is on that laptop uh, the same thing applies to, to USB so again what we want to be able to do is help customers audit this environment understand what confidential data is on these devices and then they can take the most appropriate action to secure them the other area of data loss which we see is things going out through the network such as going out from their corporate email um, infrastructure or maybe people logging into their personal mail accounts so things like hotmail.com Yahoo so, so people generally are just trying to do their job. They want to send some information home to, to go and work on it there, or they want to uh, send some information to a partner. But, but what people are kind of losing track of is that once that information exists outside of your organization, you, you no longer have any control over it. That data can then be sent to other people. The other area is more focused around the storage. So, so looking inside people's own, say maybe for example their file servers, their databases, messaging systems, SharePoint, etc. The most important thing around the best practice is firstly prioritizing what type of data you want to protect. You know, different information is going to have different importance to different organizations. So, so for example, if you're a, a car manufacturer, you absolutely you want to protect the, the latest model that you're working on. Whereas if you're a bank or a casino, uh, maybe you want to protect your your, your customer database or your VIP list or uh, once you've actually identified what type of data is most confidential to you that the, the kind of data that you want to focus on first you would normally go through a period of, of monitoring so, so this really means you sit back you, you're, you're looking at the kind of data loss which is occurring trying to build up some, some ideas some, some patterns of, 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 of where the data loss is going so so where is the data going to what else has this person sent why are they sending it uh, and, and just really get an idea for, for the kind of the way in which your, your confidential data is being used. Because the last thing we want to do is actually stop any kind of business from, from occurring. If we were to prevent confidential data from leaving your organization on you know, day one, it would have an extremely detrimental effect to, to any business. So th the first thing we want to do is make sure that any kind of changes we introduce are, are going to have the least possible disruption to your organization. Yeah, so as we said, the first thing to do is prioritize your data. Secondly, we're going to start monitoring and really once we kind of have this idea, we're going to find that a lot of the data loss which is occurring is due to things like you know, broken business processes, people not realizing that they're sending confidential information. So, so once we kind of have this understanding, we've changed those business processes, we've identified where this confidential data should be allowed to go, where it shouldn't be allowed to go, we can then start switching on things like notification. So what this allows us to do is to say that when data loss occurs, we actually tell the person who um, actually violated that policy. So, so if they copy data to USB disk or if they <coughs> email the data to some place outside of your organization, 
organization, we're able to quickly tell them, sorry, you've done something wrong. And, and they get to connect those two events. So they connect the data loss with actually the pop-up warning on their screen or the email in their mailbox telling them this. Typically, we'll see the, the biggest reduction in data loss will, will definitely occur after we enable the notification, uh, just because of the, the way people's minds work. And lastly, we will look at the prevention. What this allows us to do is to say that when we detect data loss occurring, what do we want to do? Once, we, once we've managed to change people's behavior, we've changed the business processes, we're still maybe seeing some data loss occurring. So for the more severe data loss in the first case, actually we can say that we're going to block that data. If, so, if someone is trying to log into their Hotmail account uh, and send some email somewhere um, with your confidential data, we can actually prevent that, you know, when they click send from their Hotmail account, we can actually stop that, that transaction from going through. Uh, same thing is if they're sending email from their enterprise account or they're send, you know, copying data to USB or whatever the, the case might be, we're actually able to stop that, that information from, from leaving your organization. So I think we can say that data loss has always been occurring for a very, very long time within organizations. But um, more recently, there's been a heightened awareness uh, due to events that have been published in the media. So, so actually, this has resulted in organizations actually needing to get a better understanding of what data loss is occurring from their organization uh, and, and, and the possible ramifications of that. Uh, what we're seeing is that the organizations are looking to engage experts to, to help them take control of the data loss, to, to help them measure their risk, you know, and, and, and as time goes on, effectively prevent that from happening at all.